In this video, we will try to evaluate the expression i raised to i. So, in complex numbers, we know that i represents the imaginary number. But how can we evaluate this type of expression? An imaginary number i raised to another imaginary number i. Well, in order, in order for us to solve this type of problem, I believe we must know first the different representations for complex numbers. The first one is basically in the form x plus yi, where your x represents the real number and your y represents the imaginary number. So, if we will try to plot this expression on the complex number plane where your horizontal axis represents the real numbers and the imaginary number is represented on the vertical axis we can plot x which is on the real number line we can plot from the origin x units let's say this and on the imaginary number line we can plot y unit from the origin let's say y and then drawing A vertical line and horizontal line and plotting the intersection which is this point we can represent this to be rx plus yi and now we can explore more on this imaginary number and real number representation by drawing a red triangle such as this one wherein your legs has x unit and the other one has y unit and we can write or we can represent the hypotenuse to be r then we can represent the angle formed between r and the reference real axis to be theta so if we want to try or if we want to find the representations of x in terms of r and theta Using this red triangle, we can use trigonometric functions. So we know that cosine theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine theta is equal to x over r. And solving for x, we have x is equal to r cosine theta. Likewise, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, y over r. And if we want to solve for y, we have y equal to r sine theta. And if we want to solve for r in terms of x and y, we know that in Pythagorean theorem, when we have a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. So we have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And solving for r, we have square root of x squared plus y squared. 
And then, if we want to solve for theta, we can use the tangent function. We know that tangent function is equal to the opposite over adjacent. And solving for theta, we have arc tan of y over x. Okay. So now that we already know the different representations of x, y, and y in terms of r and theta, we can now write another representation of complex numbers in terms of r and theta. So we know that we have the complex representation of x plus yi. And using the equivalent for x in terms of r and cosine theta, we can substitute it as r times cosine theta plus y is equivalent to r sine theta. And we will just affix the complex or the imaginary number i. So therefore, if we want to factor out r, we can have r times quantity of cosine theta plus i sine theta. So therefore, x plus y i can be represented or also as r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. Or mostly, this is written as r cis theta. Remember that your theta must be in region. So, aside from this representation, Another important representation will be using the Euler's identity. So, in Euler's identity, it states that E raised to I theta is equal to R A uh, cosine theta plus I sine theta or e raised to negative i theta is equal to cosine theta minus i sine theta, where your theta must also be in region. So therefore, if we will just try to, to multiply both sides of the equation by r, so let's say r, and then r, we can also represent x plus y i to be equal to r e raised to i theta. So now, we know that we have three representations now for a complex number, which is the x plus y i, and using the trigonometric form, r times quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta and the Euler's identity r times e raised to i theta. So now that we all know the different representations of complex number, we can use these representations to solve for the expression i raised to i. So let's try to solve now i raised to i. So if we let z be equal to i raised to i, and then taking the natural logarithm of both sides, we have ln z is equals to ln i raised to i. We can simplify the right side of the equation as i ln i. And now, we can transform the i here, which is in the form 
x plus yi where your x is equals to 0 and your y is equal to 1. Since i is equals to 0 plus 1i or simply i, right? And I want to transform this i into its Euler's identity form. So how? R e raised to i theta. So in order for us to transform this, we must first find the r and the theta. But how? We already derived the formula here using this formula. So solving for r, we have square root of x squared plus y squared. So 0 squared plus 1 squared, we have r is equal to 1. And theta is equal to arctan of y over x. So arctan of y is 1 and x is 0. So arctan of 1 over 0 is undefined. So we know that the angle in order for the tangent to be undefined, the angle must be what degree? 90 degree, right? So therefore, our theta will be 90 degrees or pi over 2 since we want the theta to be always in radian. So therefore, we can write now I using Euler's form to be R is 1 times E raised to I and our theta is pi over 2. Or simply i is equals to e raised to i pi over 2. And then I want to substitute these i representations in terms of Euler's form here. So we have i ln of e raised to i pi over 2. And we can simplify this expression using loss of logarithm to be simply i times i pi over 2. And i times i is i squared pi over 2. Since i squared is equal to negative 1, we have negative pi over 2. So therefore, we have ln z to be equal to negative pi over 2. But we're not yet done since we still uh, need to transform this ln z to simply z, right? So in order for us to do that, we can have these both sides as the exponent of both base E. And then applying again the loss of logarithm, we can cancel out this one. And our left side we can be will be simply z. And then the right side to be e raised to negative pi over 2. And therefore, we already arrived at the final answer z which is i raised to i. So therefore, i raised to i is equivalent to negative pi over 2.